Hi everybody, this is Mr. Schaefer with a continuation of Calculus Video Lesson 1.1 covering the instantaneous rate of change of a function. What I'd like to do is go through three separate examples from three of the approaches that we talked about before. A numerical approach, a graphical approach, and then ending with an algebraic approach. So in calculus, when we talk about a numerical approach, all that means is that we're dealing with a data table. There's a series of numbers, um, some data that's provided for us, and we need to perform calculus um, calculations on that data. So in this example, we have a table that represents the number of pieces of candy in the college counseling office over the course of the day. The day starts at 8 o'clock a.m., and X represents the number of hours since that first day of school. And here's the question. What is the rate at which candy is disappearing at time X equals 3? Now, what we're going to do is bound x equals 3 on the data table. And we'll use the symmetric difference quotient. By that, I just mean we're going to go around the number 3 using 2 and using 4. So how does that look in the difference quotient? Well, c of 4 minus c of 2 divided by 4 minus 2 is the average rate of change difference quotient that should be written down on your paper. From the table, we can get our answers. C of 4 is going to be 6. C of 2 is 8. And we'll be dividing that by 4 minus 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. And let's write down proper units. Pieces of candy... And then per, we are in hours, so uh, pieces of candy per hour. If I were to write a sentence that would interpret this, I would say at 11 a.m., since the day starts at 8 a.m., three hours later would be 11, candy is disappearing at the rate of negative one pieces of candy per hour. That's a numerical approach of an average rate of change. The second question here has a picture. So this is a graphical approach. There's no function provided. There's no data aside from the picture itself. We're going to use a graphical analysis to approach this problem. So the graph shows the total cost for a company. Part A says to arrange the average rates of change from least to greatest. A to B, B to C, and then A to C. Remember graphically that the average rate of change is the slope of the secant line. For example, a line that goes through point A and point B, which is secant, the slope of that line would be our rate of change. It looks like we go a little bit steeper from B to C, like that. And then A to C might be somewhere in the middle of those two slopes if I arrange them. So I might say that the smallest slope of the secant is A to B. The greatest or the steepest might be B to C. There we go. And then the middle, A to C. That would be my arrangement of those secant line slopes from least to greatest. Now, let's do that again for the tangent line. Part B says, arrange the instantaneous rates of change. When we see that word instantaneous rate of change, what that means is the derivative or the slope of the tangent line in this case. So at point A exactly, my tangent line might look like this. At point B, my tangent line is a little bit steeper. There we go. Point C would be there. So it looks like point B maybe has the steepest line if I try to draw that a little bit more accurately. You might have something like this. So I would say that A is the smallest slope. 
and then B is the greatest slope, C might be somewhere in the middle between A and B. So graphically here, I'm looking at the slope of the tangent line. So now they're arranged in order of the smallest to greatest. For the final part, an algebraic approach. Here there's no picture, there's no data table, but there is a function. And this is a function that is given in height. After x seconds, an object is thrown upward. Find the average velocity, part A, in the first two seconds after it is thrown. Now average velocity is going to be the change in height divided by the change in time, x seconds. So the first two seconds after it is thrown, that would simply be h of 2 Let's fix that there. All right, try that again. h of 2 minus h of 0, all divided by 2 minus 0. That would be the average velocity between the first two seconds. Part B, the next two seconds. Well, that would be from two to four. So again, h of four minus h of two, all divided by four minus two. Now I'd like to show you a quick shortcut on the calculator to do these difference quotients relatively quickly. If we know what the function is, in this case for the algebraic approach, go ahead and type that function in y1 of your calculator. In this case, negative 4.9x squared plus 64x plus 20. Once that's typed in y1, we're going to go back to the home screen. So second quit, or second mode, just to go back to the home screen. And then do this. Press alpha y equals, and then enter on n slash d, which is option number one. That's just going to give you a little embedded fraction tool in your calculator's home screen. And now I want to compute h of 2 minus h of 0. My h function is typed in y1. So I'm going to retrieve that function in y1. The way you do that is to press alpha, trace. Alpha, trace. And here I pull up a little shortcut menu with all of my different y functions. Press enter on y1 because that's where my h function was typed. So h of 2 minus h of 0. Alpha trace, retrieve y1, and there's h of 0. In the denominator, I'm dividing that by 2 minus 0. So there's the average rate of change, the average velocity in this case, from 0 to 2 seconds. I'll press Enter and get a value of 54.2. And then for another shortcut, press second Enter to retrieve the previous entry. Part B said to find the average velocity in the next two seconds. So now I just have to back, backtrack and change my 2 in the numerator to a 4. Change the 0 to a 2. And we're dividing that by 4 minus 2. So two calculations for the average, the average velocity of that problem. Should probably put units on this. So for my first example, I had 54.2. We are in meters and seconds, so velocity would be meters per second. And part B, 34.6 meters per second. So that's how you would find the instantaneous and average rate of change in a number of examples from both a numerical, graphical, and algebraic approach. Thanks for watching.